Incoming message. Buying shit online that you put inside your body that is not coming from any type of doctor, not coming from any type of healthcare professional, not coming from any trusted source is a very questionable thing for you to do. What's going on, fam? This is K.R. Jones of the Off The Strength Podcast, and I am here to tell you to like listen subscribe and if you're feeling freaky visit off the strength.com that's where you can go and get more information on us that's where we can link we can build we can connect and let's make this thing work Classy is something that I'm going to question on you every day. <laughs> like, I'm trying to understand what you're doing. I got way more at. class than you. Nigga. Oh, yeah? <laughs> Some people's skills way better than yours. Nah, that is a <laughs> damn lie. You you don't even, you can't even say that with a straight face. You know that I, is. My people's skills way better than yours. <laughs> no, I think people misunderstand that my niceness is weakness most of the time. Yeah, for sure. Today was not the day for that. You know, I definitely came across a I couple of different issues. I never had problem. Be- that's because you might come across like you mean, but I actually have a whole different bag. I come across nice, but then people get it twisted. Yeah. It's like the confusion happens very early, and then it's understood very soon after that. You know, I try to make sure that everything is un- is left unambiguous <laughs> as I come inside that space, man. But apart from that, yo, I started the day down bad, but I think I'm going to make the swing back and I'm going to get my full recovery by the end of the day, man. You ever start off on a bad foot, but make sure that you ended off on a good foot, Kyle? You're goddamn right. Talk to me about it. Man, I'd say it's like, uh, you know, when you wake up, you'd be like, damn, who peed in your cereal today? You know, because people just have that type of pissy attitude when you walk into the, the day. I don't know who's peeing in cereal, but I'm going to let you slide with that, it's man. It's one of them expressions like, who screwed the pooch? You What's know what good, I'm everybody? Saying? What's good? <laughs> Welcome back to yet another episode of Off the Strength. We're giving you the inside look into all things wellness culture. I'm a trainer called Tony, and of course, with me, I have a classy gentleman who's screwing pooches and peeing in cereal. Put respect <laughs> on my name. <laughs> K.R. Jones is in the building. That's right, folks. We are back. And ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, listeners of all time from near and far, you are now in store for a treat because it's the return of the variety show. That's when we give you our best foot forward. So hopefully you take your best foot forward. You do that two-step, that tango, whatever it is you need to do to make it on through the week with the best goddamn wellness information available yeah yay brother jones how are you today my friend man i'm feeling good i'm feeling refreshed and i'm feeling like i was reclaiming my time this week brother. okay how'd that look it looked like my clients that i normally see every day of the week was gone away traveling for business uh-huh so i had that time to be blessed with my own time you know tone if i could afford me sometimes life be pretty damn good but i took that time to give back and by giving back i literally just took time to actually hand thank everybody who donated to my gofundme okay it was 77 people but i don't know the last time you wrote 77 individual thank yous yeah it took a lot of time that's what's up man i congrats to having a community that would want to support you through that man and i i like the fact that you took some time to write out to them man that's what's up yeah, it was beautiful. It was very cathartic, and uh, I would only equate it to, like, I've never been married, but you know how you got to thank people for, like, the wedding gifts and things yeah, of that okay. nature. It's, it's, it's a tedious task. I didn't know where you was taking us, but, but I'm love glad felt, you, know? <laughs> you brought it back to the love, my how man. How was your week, man? Yo, I, so I told you how everybody today was trying me, but before yeah. I got into the trials and tribulations of Tony today... I'm going to say a prayer for you. I, I hope so. I did have a pretty good week, all things considered, man. So I started off... I got a chance to check out a new coffee and wine bar, Miss Barb's, out in BK. That was pretty cool. That sounded like your type of bag. It was definitely it. I could be there in the day or the night. I was like, hey, y'all got a customer in in me. <laughs> Just know. Built in. <laughs> I'll be here during the day. Nice Chianti at night. It's all good, you know? Slid out of there. Got a chance to kick it with some of the Brooklyn fam for the last 10 bed star weekend. You know, I got it, uh, was pulled up to Warud. And I kicked it with L over there on Tompkins Avenue and saw the last like weekend that they were gonna have a block shut down Tama? over there. Tama, yeah. That wasn't the last. That was the first time. They said since it was the last the summertime. One. <laughs> and that's the last one we ever go again. They keep saying it's the last. Every time they do it, they said it was gonna be the last one. So it was bad people out there. So the homie Greg Banks out there uh performing. You know, I don't know if you ever seen he got the real Wild prince like soulful kind of situation with the locks. That's the He's only way you can get that off. Yeah, he was making it work, man. And then last but not least, you know, I got a chance to wrap up that day 
with a vinyl set from none other than the homie Dot Ichiro over at Beer Wax. And again, a soulful Sunday is going to be something that's going to be beautiful whenever you see Dot Touchdown. That's always going to be a great thing. Unfortunately, though, Kyle, as the week progressed, I learned some tragic news about the extended members of the bike family this week. So I don't know if you got a chance to hear uh, a little bit about what happened in Queens earlier. And this is not somebody that I personally knew, but someone who was a part of the social riding community in in New York City was tragically struck and ended up losing their lives. And I wanted to bring that into the Ask the Professionals this week because I do want to talk about a greater calling that I think we need across New York City just for more decency, I've been saying. But honestly, man, we need to be remembering that we are connected in this greater community more so than you might think, right? So... In this week's Ask the Professionals, uh, again, I want to bring it back to last Tuesday where the New York City Biking uh, Club, New- NYC Bike and Brew, had a social ride, right? And in a CBS News report, I learned that Amanda Savidio, uh, age 36, was attempting to ride through an intersection after she finished her ride and was unfortunately struck by a car trying to evade the police officers. So... I really want to call in everybody in the New York community in light of this tragic hit and run out in Queens in a space that I'm certain as much time as I spent in Queens, I was riding up and down that intersection on 34th Avenue and 37th Street. Every day we share roads with mothers, we share roads with fathers, with sons, with daughters, and extended members of someone's family. Kyle, I want to know this week, how can we find a different way of really embedding compassion in the actions that we have to ensure the movements and decisions that we make on these roads reflect the level of empathy that I really want to bring back into the city. Man, uh, I just had to take a moment to sit with that considering it's been what, almost two, two months and two weeks since my accident. Yeah. And I'm still here. I very much could have been one of them white bikes, one of these people that are no longer with us because of the decisions behind someone else behind a wheel. Right. And when I think about New York City and the empathy within the city, it does exist. There are still good people. It's not everyone, but there are good individuals out there and we need more. And the only way that happens is exactly how you laid out where there has to be intention behind what you're doing. If you're running from the police, know what is at stake, right? Know what's at risk when you're behind a wheel and you've got a city full of cyclists, right? Like, that's kind of crazy to me to just... City full of cyclists, city full of pedestrians, city full of kids. This is a residential neighborhood, you know what I mean? And it's it's not lost on me that I also got hit out in Queens. I talk about this all the time. People drive in a completely different manner in certain, in the outer boroughs in some instances, and... Yeah, it could have easily gone a different direction for me, too. You know, I think it wasn't even until I saw your accident. I deal with pain a little bit differently. It wasn't until I saw you in the hospital and saw your accident that I actually reflected, oh, yeah, I went through that, too. And it was something that I never really, I think, dealt with the trauma that was around that and behind that. But it could have easily turned out into a circumstance that, you know, unfortunately, we did see happen. Again, one person removed from a space that I frequent all the time. So she rode with bike and brew, but she also pulled up to some of the social cycling rides as well. And a lot of that community is people that I'm really close to. I speak with on a weekly basis in all of their stories. They're mentioning her, you know, so again, rest in peace to Amanda. I'm sending love out to her and all of her family. The New York city bike and brew crew are going to be hosting a vigil and they will be putting up a ghost bike this week uh, to memorialize her at the site of her crash. And she was only a couple blocks from her home. So they really want to make sure that this is something that, is going to be a lasting tribute to her spirit and her love for the community. So on Tuesday, October 29th, the ceremony will start at 6.30 p.m. And it's going to be taking place at the site of the accident, which is 34th uh, Avenue and 37th Street out in Astoria, Queens. Again, rest in peace to Amanda. My heart and love go to you and your family out there. All right, Brother Jones, I want to leave a little space on that one. Um, it's time to get into a little bit of good. I want to get into a little bit of bad. Now, we'll talk a little bit about some ugly this week. We're going to change pace. We're going to lift the spirits up. And we're going to get into some of this week's rip from the headlines, man. And I'm going to start off with a story that was good. In particular for me, because it was something that I saw a little bit of reflection of self in there, man. So I got a shout out to a young brother by the name of Destin George Bell. He is the CEO and founder of a gamified fitness app called Cardio. And Cardio, Kyle, just this week, 
got a deal from ABC's Shark Tank. Now, did you see anything about cardio in your timeline or in your neck of the woods? Absolutely not. <laughs> so cardio is a fitness app with an emphasis on community, and it allows people to come together and team up around engaging in fitness outdoors. So the creator was inspired by trying to come up with an idea that kind of mimics Pokemon Go while you're outside, but trying to get people to do a little bit more fitness activities. So you can run, walk, or cycle and take claim over a neighborhood. And then you can battle with other people who want to try to steal your territory and move over into your neck of the woods and really, you know, run your block, so to speak. So to see that it was a young black man doing that and to see that he was actually making it onto a national syndicated show, also promoting health and wellness is something that I got to champion every time I see it. How'd you feel about hearing that story, man? I like how you highlighted the good exclusively in this story yeah. of, of like, all right, he's young, he's black, he's on the national television promoting health and wellness. Game of five fitness. The shit is stupid. No. Right? We're not <laughs> out here doing the Pokemon Go. I'm doing it. I'm pulling up for cardio. I don't need that to exercise or for my cardio, so to speak. I mean, I do feel the gamification is a new angle. We haven't seen that, especially from uh, young black creators in that sense so shout out to him for that there's not enough people in that space i can't ever have any disparaging remarks about it no matter what i actually felt about it whether i would use it or not i have to champion the fact that there is not enough young black ceos in general but in particular even smaller amount young black ceos that care about health and wellness to this extent so i'm gonna say rumble young man rumble i hope you go as far as you possibly can don't let hating ass niggas like kyle take you away from where you need to go <laughs> gotta catch them all <laughs> I'm going to stay in the world of gym and cardio. Now, when it comes to cardio, Kyle, if I say the name Concept 2 to you, what comes to mind? Not a thing. Concept 2 are the stationary rowers and the ski erg machines. Oh, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Why are you late with that, brother? Because I thought you were a professional and I thought I you know knew what it was. Name. It ain't Pepsi. <laughs> so Concept 2 is going beyond cardio and now Concept 2 is coming onto the market with a strength erg. That's right, Kyle. It's a strength training machine that looks eerily similar to their traditional ski erg. I like the ski erg. Yeah, but this now has what they're calling wind resistance, and you can deliver up to 1,500 pounds of force on the rower frame. You could do rows. You could do presses. You could do a leg press on this machine. So it is very much a similar platform to what it looked like for their traditional row. But now you have at least a good three or four different strength-based exercises that you could use on their strength erg. They spent about two years trying to develop this, and they wanted to cite uh, people in the city specifically trying to save space. Is This is going to be a space-saving uh, device that could allow you to get your movement in a whole new different way. What's your thoughts on the Concept 2 row erg now going into the strength erg? I'm actually here for that because I feel like this is some really nerdy fitness specific shit. And if you know what a ski erg is, then this is your type of party. Not everybody knows. Now, it does on the looks of it look very similar to what the rower would look like. Um, some components of what the ski erg would look like. But then it just kind of has that same exercise equipment that's in home like a Peloton would be or insert a tonal or whatever your fit tech would be. Um, my top three cardios. It, when I got the bag, we talked about the you know tricking off when you got it. Yeah, I need the rower in the crib. I need the ski erg, and I also need a versa climber. Yeah. Those three things alone, I would just keep my joints happy and get my cardio in on the regular. So I'm actually here for this. Absolutely. Now staying inside the gym world, uh, I've been sent a lot of memes this week about the same thing. A lot of people are just finding out that a study apparently went around that said that gym equipment is dirtier than public toilet seats, right? Oh, and I want to let people know. One of those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just want to let everybody know that this was a topic that was covered on this show many, many moons ago when I said there was some nasty-ass people inside the gym that would just straight up hit the urinal and walk beeline outside of the bathroom right onto the gym floor. And I want to talk to these people We've again. We've seen it! I'm telling you, this was a neck slappable offense for this reason specifically. So this is what I want to just bring back to the top. I already knew that these people was filthy, and I was already putting people in the corrective path with the hand that was actually sanitized. A sanitized slap is going to be the thing that gets you right back on track, Kyle. That's what I'm trying to let people know out there. This Pass me you, that baby powder. <laughs> just sprinkle a little sprinkle bit on there. Sprinkle a little bit up. <laughs> wow. Just give them a nice, nice little slap, man. You know, clean that whole shit up. There's not enough people, and when I mean people, I'm going to just go ahead and say uh, cisgendered males. Okay. Don't wash their damn hands. 
in the bathroom. Nah, that's gross, bro. That's that's what they do. And then they only do the fake wash if they got eyes on them where they just Clicks. let the water sprinkle. <laughs> 20 seconds. It said, sing a song while you wash. You need to get soap and water and rub your hands together like you're trying to start a fire. If you're not doing that, your ass is dirty. In the post-pandemic world, I still can't believe we still have to have these conversations. But We do. I'm going to move on into my last couple articles, and it's going to be dedicated to the younger lifting folk in particular. Now, Kyle, I am not somebody who is in particular on the market for energy drinks. But apparently, the energy drink market is moving like hotcakes, my friend. What'd you call it? The alternative beverage market? The alternative beverage market is not the energy drink market. This is completely separate. This is uh, offset on its own. And I just saw this week that Keurig Dr. Pepper Inc., that is makers of Keurig and also Dr. Pepper on its own. That's a nasty mix. Bought 60% stake in a sports drink known as Ghost. Now, I've seen this on a different... Uh, I've seen this on different shelves everywhere. They bought that 60% stake for $990 million and plans to buy the rest of the business uh, rolling into 2028. Now, just for a little bit of added uh, info on this, there are several different sports energy drinks that are coming to market and they are making tons of money. Now, I've also seen Prime that, that Logan Paul has put out. Prime last year had over a billion dollars in sales. And are projecting to go even higher. This is definitely something that caters to the young homies. And it's something that I think is interesting to see how popular it's becoming. Because there's a lot more celebrities coming into different energy drinks specifically. What's your thoughts on the energy drink market? Seeing how much money is coming in there. They're projected that the sales are going to go up to 4x in the next year alone. So we're already starting at $990 million. Other companies already at over a billion. And they're saying four times that is going to be where they're trying to go. What are your thoughts on this category it's trying to climb year over year? This is a very bad category for me, and I'm going to tell you why. When you look into Prime and you look at the money that Logan Paul made, but then look at the forever chemicals that were found exactly. in something like Prime, where they had to take it off the shelves immediately, these energy drinks are very high in sugar content majority of the time. And when you look at sugar as a drug the same way you would at nicotine sales and things that kind of fly under the radar that aren't necessarily alcohol or street drugs, it's the same thing. So when the profit margin is so high, it's because they're directly selling to younger people, younger individuals, that's going to have a cascading effect on their health moving forward. And yeah, and they're targeting markets that I never would have even thought about either. Like the gaming market apparently is something that people are really looking for in this energy drink thing. So yeah. Hey, shout out to the young homies. I just want to make sure that you taking these crazy multicolored drinks and you're drinking all this stuff that's got uh, not just a high t- content of sugar, a disproportionately high content in caffeine that you would not normally see. This does have effects on your bodies. You need to pay attention to what those effects are. And this is what's going to bring me to the last little bit of ugly this week, Kyle. The FDA just issued a warning for SARMs, uh, dangerous side effects Say that are now? targeting teens online. So. SARMs, S-A-R-M-S. So they stand for Selective Androgen Receptor Modulators, right? So a SARM, I'm not something that, this is not something that I was familiar with, and I'm in the gym actively. I've been a part of that. I've been around people taking all different types of steroids, testosterone, you name it. But SARMs are a new shortcut that are Selective Androgen Receptor Modulators that are really targeted to people who are following fitness influencers out there. And it's the alternative for you using the traditional kind of uh, steroids, I would I would assume, that are specifically being put into the alternative anabolic steroid market, right? So now the FDA is saying that these things are being able to, because there's no ban on them specifically, you could advertise them on social media platforms, and they're showing like young teens in particular these ads that are giving you unrealistic results, showing how people are gaining weight and people are getting muscle. But the side effects of these unregulated drugs are kind of shocking, man. So serious health risks associated with SARMs include liver damage, heart problems, increased risk of stroke and heart attack, hormonal imbalances that will last you permanently for the rest of your life, mood disorders, and potential long-term effects that we still do not know. So these are, a again, unregulated class of drugs because they're new. But it's apparently something that is ticking up in the young lifting community in particular. What's your thoughts on hearing somebody pushing these arms out on the youth them? That sounds crazy. 
Yeah, FDA was not really. Uh, they had so many people got affected by it, but the FDA had to make a statement this week about it. When you're looking to make some type of investment, and that's just that doesn't just go for your body, but also thinking about like the money that you spend for the stuff that you digest and things of that nature. You should always be aware of whatever those consequences are going to be, because that's a decision that you made to put this product that you don't know into your body for. Instant gratification is what it sounds like when you could have avoided all of that, put in the work for a month, three months and had a completely different outcome. It's tough to say that to younger people specifically. And this is what I'm it's a little bit more predatory than that, because I don't know if they have the the exposure to what the good information is. But, yeah, to Kyle's point, there are no shortcuts in this game that is life or health and wellness in particular. And if somebody is promising you unrealistic results in a disproportionately short amount of time, you better believe that there's going to be a tax that you have to pay to get to that lasting result that you're trying to see, you know, and in particular buying shit online that you put inside your body that is not coming from any type of doctor, not coming from any type of healthcare professional, not coming from any trusted source is a very questionable thing for you to do. I can't, condone it i can't say that i would ever try it and i definitely would say i'll try to keep all my young homies away from that that's gonna be it from my side of this week's rip from the headlines man fda is letting you know don't play with them things man pause now (laughs) uh that was just uh, this has been an emotional episode for me already we're talking about you know real life stuff happening and predatory behavior practices with these corporations yeah man which I feel like parents, if you're listening to this, you should be paying more attention to what you're giving your child, specifically that teenage, because I think that's the most impressionable time. That's when you're fragile, man. That's That's when you're trying to figure out everything. Yeah. So pay attention to that. Let me see what I got in my own good, bad, and ugly this week. Trying to pick up the vibe a little bit, because you out here, man, you you real buzz killing today. Hey, it was just the world that you was know, doing this. I wasn't nah, I was an observer in the I'm world. I'm looking for the happiness in the world. Bring Damn it, it then. <laughs> Bring it. Happy people. Where's it at? Happy people. Nah, you can't sing that, man. Yeah, rest in peace, man. And see, you go right back <laughs> to your buzz killing this. Now, Starting with some good stuff, man. I got to shout out the homie Reginald Thomas. He is a Baltimorean. Okay. You know I always got love for the Baltimore folks, and he's a photographer. Now, I've been following this brother's story for a minute because he first got into the game as the Boston Red Sox photographer, and that was the year that they had won. So it was like, yo, you captured the season. And now his new venture that I saw was he was a part of the photography team For Jason Tatum's new sneaker. Okay. So Jason Tatum being a Jordan brand athlete, you know, they got to show what they can for to show these shoes, whatever the case may be. He's working with Vince Staples and these photos were so damn good. It just instantly took me back to Michael Jordan and Spike Lee. Okay. Now, not to say that Jason Tatum is anywhere near Michael Jordan. But I would say Vince Staples is closer to Spike than Jason Tatum would be to Mike Jordan. I'm going to let you make that connection yourself. <laughs> he created a, a short film, if you will, or the Netflix series, The Vince Staples Show. It, it's no do the right thing, but I, I feel like that gap was a little closer. In Kyle's mind, yes. Sure. You know, but that's just the energy and the feel of these photos. So I had to shout out the homie Reginald, man, because... His work is is truly amazing, and the black and whites is always going to be a good photo choice. Yeah. So that was the good that I saw. Okay. Sliding out of that, staying in Boston Celtic territory, Okay, I want to talk about Stephen A. Smith and Jalen Brown having the talk. Yeah, I saw that. Now, from your own knowledge, what do you know about that situation? Uh, it stemmed from the fact that Stephen A. Smith was using his unnamed sources as a reference to talk about uh, how. I'm sorry, uh, not Jason Tatum. That was um, Jalen Brown. Jalen Brown. He was using unnamed sources to talk about Jalen Brown's perception in the league. And they were talking about how he thinks he's too high of himself. And that's what's keeping him away from sponsorship opportunities and things of that nature. Yes, 100 percent. So uh, briefly. Jalen Brown obviously didn't like that, went on the whole state your source rant, made T-shirts. You know how athletes get and they try to have a marketable moment. And this was the first conversation that we've seen post championship, post all the above 
Uh, we haven't really heard about this talk since last season. Now, what was interesting to me was what you just said about the unnamed source and how Jalen Brown wasn't marketable, but then they took that deeper dive into who he was as right. an athlete of like, oh, he's really smart. He went to Berkeley and he was in MIT and did all this other stuff. And I'm like, wow, on paper, this brother is fantastic. He's out of this world. In real life, he could not get his point across articulately in my mind. It was like, fam, what are you doing? You clearly play ball and don't be on microphones because it's like you can see the league difference in someone like a Stephen A who talks online. And you can see why he's paid the money that he's made just on presentation. Yeah, they're two totally different uh, ventures and there's two totally different skill sets, you know. Uh, I would say he's stepping into his arena. That'd be kind of like you expecting Stephen A to be able to play him one-on-one -on, -one on the court. It's not going to happen. It's not going to look good. He get dunked on. Yeah, you know, it's getting times. bad. And I just noticed that instantly and was like, damn, talking on a microphone, being in front of a camera, being able to articulate how you actually feel is truly a skill. So that was highlighted for me. Uh, this whole ideology that Jalen Brown had about not wanting to sign to Nike if it meant he could be on the USA basketball team. Mm -hmm. I don't know how I feel about that uh, in a sense of I know he's been out here trying to promote his own sneaker brand. I don't know if you've seen his shoes. His shoes are trash. But <laughs> apart from his shoes being trash, I stand for the sentiment of what that means in general. I think there's. Players, we're at the age where players are starting to recognize the change in the guard. It's not just the consumer side. Yeah. So Nike used to be that big coveted thing. And if you are a breakout championship winning star, it would make sense for you to have a signature shoe on there. But if you also have a teammate that also has already a signature shoe on there, how wide is your lane to stand out and differentiate not yourself? Not wide at all. So being somebody that's going to go slightly in a different direction, you might not have the same national recognition. You might not get the same product placement you might not get the same billboards or anything like that but if you own the product yourself and you sell it yourself you stand a chance in today's market if he could market himself if he does brush up some of those skills that you said he might be lacking and and actually dives into getting a team that could help him promote the products the way that they need to be promoted he could stand a chance to net and make more than somebody who was signing a traditional contract to any uh sneaker company not just nike i don't want to isolate them on that side Putting the power on the athlete to be their own business and be their own brand is something that you're going to see more and more frequently, I think, going forward. I couldn't agree more. I just feel as though his sneakers are trash. No, his sneakers do look god-awful. I, I can't help that in any way, shape, or form. They look like Sailor Moon ones. And I was looking at that. I was like, yo, why are there crystals yeah. on there? Yeah. What's happening? Between him and Kyrie, those last couple shoes that I've seen that were designed by the players, I was like, you don't have to tell me that you designed this. I, I'm looking at it. We can see it. And I, it looks like you took one we skill don't set digest as far as you could, but this skill set does not serve you. It doesn't serve you, and it doesn't serve us as consumers. Now, speaking on being consumers and being served, I'm going to jump out of that story. Okay. And jump into something that's been on my timeline that I'm getting sick and tired of seeing tone. Talk about getting my Tim scuffed. Okay. It would be this brother who got the knee BL that's out here doing plyometrics. Okay. Now, when I, I talk about the knee BL, what do you, what this comes This is a to story mind? update that's coming again. This is a second story update for uh, Off the Strength where a man was getting a height altering surgery who is now. Oh, my God. This is a hysterical transition. Uh, he is now... I forgot what his height started as and what is He was like 5'8", and he went to like... He went to like 6'1". But he still looks very tricky. And I, he's trying to do plyometrics, Tony. Let the people know what plyometrics are. They're explosive movements, and, and it's going to be something that's... It's jumping, damn it. Yeah. Why are you jumping with fake legs? His, it just looks all together terrible. It's I, stiff. I can't tell you that any parts of this make sense. Uh, yeah, I don't know what his brother is. I don't know how much time he's dedicating to this. I hope he's getting a check at the end of this. That's the only thing I could say. Because this level of augmentation and the damage that he's going to do the to the rest of his body. It's crazy. It's, it's an insane process. I just got to let that just breathe for a little bit for the folks out there that consider such magnitude to go. Height-altering surgery is uh, something that will definitely change all of your biomechanics. I can tell you that. And it does not look like he just moves naturally. you are. He does, not, he does not move naturally for anything that he's attempting. He looked like a robot.
God damn it. Now, yeah, them Boston Dynamic robots jump better than what he's looking like right now. Now, speaking of robots, I want to take you on a journey to an earn your leisure story. Okay, now, shout out to you, them brothers. I know you keep up with them from time to time, right? Now, were you aware that it is illegal to go through your partner's phone because it violates the Electronic Communications Privacy Act? Nah, I got some scallywags that I want to go back to, though. <laughs> now that I do know that, <laughs> fellas, what's the statute of limitations on that? <laughs> it is a crime to have your phone went through. There's you can a- call the police on her. And get her out your life. How many years can you go back? Is really the only thing that I need to know about the this story. The statute of limitations on this is fairly new. So yeah. you can't go back Damn. to old crime. I was about to say. Trying to, you know, go back and rekindle that flame. You, you know will. who you are. I ain't rekindling a damn thing. I've been a lot put her under the jail. <laughs> she went through my shit. <laughs> Fellas, you can fight back now with the ECPA. Don't let her go through your phone. It's a crime. That's it on that. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Also, I, 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 hey, baby, you go through my phone anytime you want. You yeah, this ain't current. Yeah, this ain't this current ain't, situation. This ain't me. I'm talking for the fellas that need that. This, yes, yeah, This is your card, the ECPA. Google it. Now, you know, I just had to put that out there for the good fellas out there. And last but not least, the story that I want to cover is what was shocking to me, Tone, but are you up on Glorilla? Yes, I am. Now, Glorilla just dropped the album. She out here living her best life. Now, famously, she has a song that she talks about it being 95 degrees. You know, it's Friday and she ain't got nobody and nobody got her. Yeah, I've heard. I'm paraphrasing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I've you heard, know what I'm talking about. I've heard this song sung out at different points in times, And I've always, it's interesting energy when that's going on. Ironically, there was a clip I saw of Aretha Franklin singing this song. I don't know if it was AI. That's a little bit more than what I want. It was like I don't need it. I don't need Aretha Queen singing soul. it. It hit a little different. That's yeah. neither here nor there. I digress. But what I do want to say is, Glorilla seemingly popped out with photos of her being pregnant. Okay. Now, for somebody who ain't got her, and, yeah, and she ain't got him. Yeah. She looked got to me, Tony. I'm gonna let you know. A lot of those favorite female anthems that a lot of people sing along to. That's what I want to talk about here. They really don't be living that life. <laughs> you know, it's like y'all, y'all are setting up a lot of people in the club to be disappointed. Hot girl Summer was actually committed Girl Summer until it wasn't. Or it ends up in a Shackle Girl September. That's where it really come back into we we cuffing up it's cuffing season season. (laughs) you know the draft is already underway so to speak so it's an interesting time to see but i am happy for her and her pregnancy but do want to have that forewarning for the women out there that resonate with the i'm gonna just go ahead and say the man shaming lyrics yeah yeah, yeah. you end up with a man yeah every time never it's never not (laughs) happened it's like every single one of those favorite anthems that it was sung by a woman who was happy at home Sometimes. (laughs) Sometimes. <laughs> Just so you know. Yeah. If you can't love, can't be with the one you love, love the one you're with. Tony. Exactly. Exactly, man. We're going to slide out of that. And we're going to slide into our Raising the Bar segment this week. Okay. Let's raise it up, brother. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, listeners of all type from near and far. You're now in store to raise your bar. Now, Brother Tone. Yes, sir. I'm going to go ahead and preach again today from the book of Organic Thug, you know, verse, roll that shit, light that shit, pass that shit. You know where I'm going. And I'm thinking about this topic that came across my mental heavy this week, and it was hustle culture being a scam. Okay. Right. Now, I was talking to my cousin and uh, older cousin of mine, my grandmother's sister's son, she you know, he probably in his 50s by now you know what i'm saying so we got some age between us but he was just talking about you know the generational differences between the folks of my generation and his generation and the mindset so to speak Mm -hmm. so we get into this conversation about advancements in life and we talk about two different ways that you can advance in life first being is based upon what you do second being is based upon who you are Right now, early in life, I believed heavily in workplace meritocracy and adapted the mindset that the work I perform will directly translate to my progression monetarily and professionally. Right. The results are in, Tony. Mm -hmm. A lot of tech to test determined that was a lie. (laughs) Right. Later in life, I experienced that many ways in which life can just be unfair. I witnessed folks advance and receive opportunities. From status, despite there being more qualified candidates available and willing to step up. Who you are is representative of who you know. Every industry has a back door that's exclusively open to those in the network, if you will. There's my air quotes. 
network, Tony. Now, if you've heard the term, your network is your net worth, here's what that truly means. Someone of a higher value or status, C-suite and above, positioning or clout, can reach back and pull someone up of their choosing as long as you can provide and maintain a subpar performance at the role that they need you to play, Mm -hmm. right? Now, if you haven't done the work to play at that next level of your career, then these opportunities I'm speaking of, they probably will never really be available to you. But sometimes the work isn't just the output, right? Like you have to think about being able to take a back seat to the star of the show for a greater good, so to speak, right? Like hustle culture is a scam because its roots are designed for you to develop your game by creating your own bucket. It's very heavy with, you know, being able to score anywhere on the court or having to maintain that main character energy, so to speak, right? That's like the basis in the roots of hustle culture, romanticizing the I got it out the mud storyline. Okay. Now, hustle culture doesn't, or rather it does do a complete disservice to the work, the mindset, and the skill set needed to be an accomplished role player on a championship team. The ability to put the pride to the side and just do the dirty work behind the scenes, the garbage buckets, if you will, Mm -hmm. so to speak. Now, when I think about reaching new levels in life, the metaphor that comes to mind is a cup with a hole in it, right? If someone of a higher echelon was to share some life game with you and pour into your cup and you wouldn't be able to retain everything because there's a hole in the bottom, right? Imagine your cup got a hole in it. Somebody tried to pour into you. Can't hold anything, right? It's a weakness in your game. and Once you clog that hole, so to speak, you can then hold on to that game that someone is trying to give you. Now, we often talk about gatekeeper's tone, but the deeper you get into your respective industry, I don't think it's about gatekeeping, but it's about paying to play, right? Can you afford to play on that higher level? Can you let that energy of hustle culture leave and adapt to this team player mentality? Mm -hmm. Now, Brother Tone, I've known you to be a hustler in many facets of life, but I've also known you to be a selfless team player when you need to be. Mm -hmm. What advice could you give someone stuck between this hustle culture and the stability of being a team player off the strength? Yeah, uh, I don't know if I outright agree that all of hustle culture is a scam. Um, And I just say that because I've seen people hustle their way into better scenarios and better situations than they would have if they were, to me, lazy. Right. So there's some people that to in your example would get that opportunity to get pulled up and pulled along. Most of those people don't are not from spaces that I come from. Most of those people are not just going to be handed the corner office. Most of those people, unfortunately, spoiler alert, are not black. Sorry. So as I'm talking to the people that I know and as I've been inherited the information that I was passed down, I being good enough was never going to be something that was going to allow me to just come in and just get exactly what I thought it was going to be. So that those aspects of hustling, you got to be able to outwork. You got to be able to outperform. You got to be able to move to the higher level. I do hold on to those and I do regard that as something that I do see in myself. And I learn from a lot of people who not necessarily did it the same way that I did it, but they are people that I would still have an affinity for. So I can't say all aspects of that are bad. And to your point, there are some gaps in that story. Where it's kind of like you might have hustled to get to a certain aspect, might much like you could have worked really hard to get a great jump shot. But if you can't pass the ball, if you can't make the right cut, if you can't understand how a actual setup, a scheme of defense and offense work, that doesn't make you into a great generationally defining basketball player. Right. So in that understanding what systems are, understanding how to be able to apply that learning that you're doing on the fly and also take your skill, take your talent, take whatever you think you think highly of and be able to adjust it to make the greater good work is something that has to come with trial and error. In my story, at least it had to come with, Hey, I'm trying to get to a certain point and I'm trying to get to a, the next level and I'm not getting there. So what am I going to have uh, to change in myself? What am I going to have to really look at and really reevaluate if I want to continue to move forward? That also to me is an indication of a hustler. I'm not going to just walk in and be like, yo, I am the flyest out. I don't have to change nothing about me. The world is going to adapt to my point of view and everybody else is just going to have to get in line. That's never been my story. I have tried it in health and wellness. I've tried it in tech. 
I'm now trying it in the cannabis industry. I'm trying it in every industry that I come in with. I never walk into any of these places thinking that I'm less than. I never walk into any of those places not thinking that I could walk and bring value. I can get a bucket on my own terms. I do have to come in with a level of awareness that, hey, I might need to change how I do certain things in order to progress and in order to move forward. And I think that ultimately is the thing that kind of bridges that gap between hustling and understanding how to be a team player. You still need to hustle as a team player. You might need to hustle to get that rebound. You might need to hustle to make that that set that pick. You might need to hustle to, you know, move the ball around to get to the person that they are choosing to be the focal point of this particular story. And if you get to be a part of a lot of different teams and you play your role, how many rings Robert Ory got? We don't really talk about that. Big Shot Bob. Big Shot Bob got a lot more rings than most of your favorite he NBA players. He got seven players, of them things. Right? Most of your favorite NBA players don't have the most rings, you know? But understanding your role, understanding how to move, and understanding how you can set up your life to be successful is checking ego, is taking your skills, and being able to honestly evolve. That's the story of life. Can you evolve from one to the next? Can you be a hustler that goes into the CEO, that goes into the whatever other aspects that you want to get into? That's the story of evolution in that. I appreciate that elaborate purview. And what came to me while you were speaking was thinking about, well, the hustle culture scam to me just means there's a glass ceiling. Yeah. You just you just laid out everything else that you need to do besides hustle. To get to where you be. And the scam to me is it's not sustainable. Yes, you can draw back and think about these skills that you had to get to where you need to be. But ultimately, at the end of the day, you're still going to have to evolve past that hustle. And it's going to have to turn into a new hustle. It's going to have to turn into that role. Uh, When I was talking to my cousin about this, he was telling me how he had at some point he had to interview people for the job that he had. He stopped doing it because he was tired of the people who said people are stupid. You know how that go. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, he was looking at this guy's resume and he was like, most people don't know about life. So he looked at the guy's resume and he played college football. So he was like, oh, I see you played college football here. Uh, What position did you play? He was like, oh, uh, I got drafted or I was recruited to play quarterback and I played quarterback for two years. And then eventually they drafted a new quarterback. I'm sorry, recruited a new quarterback. These college and professional sports are the same thing in my mind. Pardon me. Nonetheless, he basically stopped playing quarterback when the new quarterback came and switched to being a tight end. Okay. And he was like, well, how was that switch? He was like, man, I love the team so much. I just wanted to do what I could do to continue to play the sport and uphold my scholarship and things of that nature. The other people in his office didn't ask about football because they just looked at it at the resume. It was like, oh, he was a college athlete. They didn't look at this guy is willing to do whatever it takes to be a team player because he's done that already. Right. Right. And that's the life experience that exists outside of the hustle culture. The scam was, hey, you play sports really good. You're going to get the scholarship. Oh, wait, we got a new dude that plays my position that's better than I am. I need to switch. I need to do something else in order to maintain this spot. Right. And that's the kind of lens that I want people to take away from this is the scam is that you always going to be a hustler. Right. You're Mm -hmm. always going to have to adapt. You can't stay in one space. You got to keep the game moving. If, you know, you're getting it over here on the left, you might need to see what the right hand doing. Yeah, exactly. I think that that's, that's the part that really resonates with me more. It's kind of like, you know, you're going to get a skill set and you're going to get something that you work hard at. And that is going to have a diminishing return eventually. Now, the people who go past that understand that picking up a new skill and picking up a new way of looking at whatever it is, the game of life, the game of basketball in this analogy If you continue to evolve those skills, you end up having a much greater uh, chance of keeping that hustle alive, keeping that motion or keeping, you know, whatever your goal is alive. I could tell you right now, most of the interviews that I've gone on, I am a terrorist with my my interview sheet. Hey, take it easy on the T-word. No, man, because people will look at at it and they, they, yeah, the block of the rock. trainer called Tony. I say that because people look at my skills and I'm coming fresh off of six rounds of interviewing with the same company. And as they're making it through, I could either hear one of two answers. One, oh, these skills directly correlate, but you might be like two to qualify for whatever this is or these skills are kind of abstract and I don't have the insight kind of like you did in the analogy to say yeah these are something that I don't see a direct line with but because you are willing to do whatever it takes in life to move forward you have acquired a whole different host of different things that 
honestly are going to be beneficial to any team that you plug into. That's how I look at most of my life. When I tell you in six rounds of interviews and having the ability to talk the way that I talk and having the opportunity to share that skill on the microphone weekly, people are intimidated by this. It's like, yo, you can answer stuff on the fly. I know you're pulling this out of nowhere. Answer something on the fly and they be like, yeah. You are, you could speak so well. He is articulate. Wait a minute. Podcaster. Yeah, exactly. He is Five able years. to come into this space and webby my ass. Navigate through specific things that was designed to trap me up, but they're like, that was a perfect answer. It's like, yeah, I know. I practice not that, but I do this in general. So if you put me in a box, I'm going to figure out how to make that work. You know, I could tell you it's played for my good. I could also tell you that that has played against me because some people get to the end of that and they're like, this motherfucker's a threat. Who taught you octagon? <laughs> yep. It's like, you should know that. <laughs> Why do you know this? You answered this too good. Demerit. <laughs> Take him down. <laughs> we don't need him in here. Yeah, he's hustled a little too hard. I don't like where he's going. <laughs> you get your new shoes out of here. You march right up out that door. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> new what? Yeah, exactly, bro. So I've, I've had that be a gift and a curse throughout my whole life, man. I had to come in and be overprepared, but also be underwhelmed by the reception of me being overprepared. So I got to understand how to really take that for what it is and still strive and go forward. Man, speaking of being overprepared, Tony, I want to talk about what this Raising the Bar segment is brought to you in part by. Let's hear it, man. It's brought to you in part by Lightlock. That is the (laughs) next generation anti-grind. Damn it, I messed it up. That is Lightlock, Tony. That is the next generation anti-angle grinder U-lock. It is made from the tough stuff. Now, I'm not going to tell you what the tough stuff is scientifically, but no, I've seen with my own eyes this lock not be broken or cut by an angle grinder when every other lock was cut in 10 seconds. Yep. Now, its patented technologies combined with the highest quality of components not only get into the science, but just know that you're going to be protected out here in these streets, right? Now, they have other products such as bike sickle locks Mm -hmm. storage locks tactical mounts and t-shirts okay you can use our link in the description right now here we go to get your light lock bicycle locks (laughs) puts you in part by KR Jones and the Off the Strength Podcast (laughs) now we're going to get into a little relax responsibly segment tone now the relax responsibly segment is also brought to you in part by frequency movement and that is where you can visit me KR Jones for not one, but two offerings. Tone? Okay. Now, these two offerings consist of roll up and roll out. That is where we smoke a little and we stretch a little. Okay. So we relax the mind, relax the body, and ease your spirit on out in the middle of the week. That's Wednesdays at 8 p.m. On Saturdays at 11 a.m. is my elevated yoga class. And that is where we realign our chakras, so to speak. Tone? Mm-hmm. We elevate our movement patterns. We synchronize our breath with our movement. And then the musical vibe is curated by none other than your boy. Okay. It's a good time. You should be there. Sounds like it. Make sure you visit us, or me rather, at Frequency Movement in Brooklyn. There we go, my man. How was you relaxing this week, Brother Jones? Man, relaxation this week looked a little different because I got some homies of mine Mm -hmm. that purchased their second home, actually. Okay. Upstate New York. I got some too, man. Now, this was in Suffering, New York. It's right on that Jersey, New York border, about 30 minutes from Storm King. There we go. Up in the mountains. And it was one of those moments where... You realize you're elevating in life because your friends are doing things that you would strive to do. Okay. Right? Like, when the people around me are winning, I feel like I'm winning because I'm living vicariously through these people. Yeah. Where it's like, yo, this ain't my crib, but I'm going to be up here kicking it with you on the regular. Oh, yeah. Right? And it feels like a, a community win, and I only want friendships that feel like when my friends win, I win too. Yeah, absolutely. Right? And it's not even from a, a jealousy or envious space because a lot of people can end up in situations like that if their energy and ego isn't checked and where it needs to be respectfully. But outside of that, being able to see two friends of mine that worked hard and achieved this goal of home ownership in New York, which is crazy as a whole because it's just the real estate market is crazy out here Mm -hmm. but it'd be a genuinely beautiful space yeah right and um 
we was adults. We was in there. We was smoking a little weed. You know, we had the wine out. We had a little Uno, a little Parcheesi. You ever played Parcheesi before? No, sir. Listen, I was playing Dominican Parcheesi. I don't know? even know what that is. Yeah, exactly. You know, como te amo. I, see, we still going to get you to eventually. We're going to get the Duolingo. Needs to be regional Duolingo Las for Papas you. Fritas. <laughs> It's something wrong. I think he's having a stroke again, his son. I don't know what's wrong with this man. <laughs> Adios, mio. His, his dual lingo is broken. He's stuck. 24-day streak. Don't you come for me out here. I'm in the Ruby League. Okay, Mr. Ruby. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about three spaces away from an emerald. That's that dual lingo talk. You don't know about that. Brother no Tom, idea. tell him how you was relaxing this week, man. Man, I was not relaxing at all this week. Dude. This, this week. <laughs> so you need some dual lingo in your life. You know? Brought me to a place where it was not easily... It was not easy for me to find a space right, to relax. So let, me, let me ask you this. You, as you articulated yourself, have been in a high stress environment. Yes. Right. <laughs> throughout this whole week, even as far as today. today. <laughs> right? Not one, two flats. Same thing. So <laughs> this, this is prime example then. So because you're in such this high strung area, how will you then re-regulate yourself to come back down to your normal being? Yeah, today I'm going to look forward to grounding myself in my practice when I get back home. I'm really looking forward to being able to not only uh, enjoy a nice leisurely bike ride now that I've gotten, again, not one, but two flats fixed on the same bike in the same day. I yeah. to talk to the same person multiple times about that. But now, as I'm on those wheels, I get to ride back, I get to leave, alleviate some of that stress, and more than anything, I'm looking forward to cooking at home, man, because uh, something about being able to provide some level of provision and being able to provide some level of comfort in particular in this climate that we're starting to move into in these fall weathers. I want to make something nice and warm, something that is good for the soul. It sticks to the rib, if you will. I'm looking forward to really getting lost in the mechanics of preparing food, getting something ready. I think I'm going to dive into a nice curry this evening. Okay. Something that's going to be good. Spice it up. You know, spice it up, but there's also slow cook in there, man. You know, I got to make sure that I get into... A little crock pot? Yeah, yeah, yeah what man. you know about the crock pot? Man, listen, man, I'm I'm very well... You're rolling the dice. Very well seasoned on that side, man. So I'm looking forward to being able to, again, provide a nice, warm kind of embrace from the inside with some good food. Boss! Come on. <laughs> you was talking about warm embraces, It's bro. a warm embrace. Boss! Why is that a boss? <laughs> it's a good feeling. I don't want to warm embrace you. I'm sorry. <laughs> we got to get past this. <laughs> yeah. Got to advance in life. I'm advancing. You know what I'm saying? Part in your left. Now, before we slide out of the relax relation, relax responsibly segment. You're trying to relax with relations. See, now you pausing me. Look at where you ended up. <laughs> it was your bad influence, man. I do want to take a short pivot into a today's calisthenics tone. Now, there is things that we talk about that are serious, much like the top of the show and people being mindful of their decisions behind the wheel. What I do want to bring to the table today is uh, a call in and this call in comes from the news of DJ Clark Kent passing at 57 to colon cancer. Yeah. Rest in peace. Now, rest in peace to this brother. We are ingratiated in hip hop culture from this podcast. Anyone that's listened to us for the last five years will know that. And if you're new to listening to us, I'm certain you can still feel the hip hop elements from the quotes and, and just how we communicate to one another. When I think about Clark Kent, I think about the imprint he left on hip hop and how his star rose so far from just music where he got into sneaker culture yeah, and things sure. that he actually loved that he had his chance to imprint. Now, him leaving us at 57 is something that it just seems too young for a lot of men in the black community. But then often the reality of like, fam, my pops passed. He was like 62. So yeah. this is around that time when our heroes, the people that we've seen grow up are checking out. Fam, I told you I was an older person in my family at 38, which is wild. Yeah. So this is the call in to talk about what, some screenings can look like for colon cancer. Brother Tone, you got anything on that? First, talk to your family members that are still here. You have to really get into understanding just in general why people are passing at the ages that they are passing. And it, don't just let it be something that's a tragic story. I know it's not the easiest thing to uh, broker a conversation around, but really talk to your family members and understand what their history of health has been, because that is 
something that's going to be directly correlated to whether or not your chances are going to be closer to having some uh, illnesses like colon cancer. I just want to pause you right there because that's the number one thing on the list is knowing your risk factors. So that comes from understanding the increased risk for black men specifically. That's, you know, always the trope that they give us. But then also understanding your family history as well. Have those wellness conversations as Tony talked about. Yeah. Also, again, it's something that we talk about often and uh, frequently on here, a healthy diet is going to be something that you want to try to promote and try to ingratiate into the rest of your life. You know, I, I know we do have cultural meals that are anchored in certain practices that do reflect a history and do reflect a heritage, but we want to promote diets that are rich in fruits, vegetables, and whole grains because, again, on the digestive system in particular, which this is an illness of the digestive system, it's going to be able to reduce some of the inflammation that you would have and take down the carcinogens that you would typically have. So you want to get those antioxidants in there. Yes. I mean, a high fiber intake, as you mentioned, when I think about limiting my red and processed meats, I'm just thinking about better quality meats. I'm not going to McDonald's and Burger King for that burger. If I'm going to a restaurant, I want the the market, whatever they have. Let me get that $70 steak and that's going to be the food that I eat because it's a higher quality. Yeah. And you don't have to be perfect all the time, but you want to make more better decisions over the course of your life. You know, uh, you also want to try to limit alcohol and tobacco. You know, um, we don't try to take away all the fun from everybody all the time. But you got to know that when you start to dabble in your vices, they do have a risk and they do have a tax that you have to pay. And these are going to be things that over the prolonged exposure and prolonged usage is going to put you at a higher incidence and higher risk of uh, developing different types of cancers. Uh, but in particular, this one. Yes, for sure. Uh, I couldn't agree more. The last thing I would just add would be maintaining a healthy weight. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of times we get people that become very confident in themselves, and I never want you to take away from your confidence, but I do want you to pay attention to how much you're weighing and what that means in real life. Are you active? Do you still keep a, a minimum or moderate activity level as you get older? And it shouldn't just be home and work, but throw some type of movement into your life. Yeah. And the weight side is not just about, again, the positivity that you feel about how you actually outlook. Look into the metabolism of what cancers actually feed on and feed off of. You know, if you have a higher incidence of the body mass indexes, you do have the ability to feed these things that are actually depleting your body at the end of the day. You know, there's a direct correlation to that weight and to the higher incidences of not just this type of cancer, but many other types of cancers for a reason specifically. It's what we're putting in that's actually feeding these damaging cells. 100%. Just to wrap this up, man, be sure to get support and encourage community action, right? Uh, promote open dialogue like this, like a conversation like this. Yo, you should be getting screened for colon cancer at 45, maybe even earlier if your family has a history of it. So being able to have these kind of dialogues can help prevent people from leaving so soon because 57 is too young for anybody with modern medicine, man. We should be at least... At least 92. Yeah, I mean, listen, I'm trying to push that to the limit. So, again, rest and in peace. And love it a lot. Yeah, man. Trying to trying to get there. Rest in peace to Claw Can for sure, brother. Sounds like you're hopeful for something, Tony. Man, first thing coming off of that, I'm hopeful for the longevity of all the people that, you know, we reach out and we inspire on these great mics. I hope for that that correlates to some longevity in their lives because they are taking these preventative measures and they are moving forward. Amen to that, brother. I would say my hope this week goes to those out there that are looking for clarity and which hustle is best for you. Okay. If you sniff powder, don't sell powder. Nope, not doing this with you. <laughs> not going through it. This is not the doctrine or it's not the sermon that, that I'm was leaving. It. That was the one right there. Okay. That's some sound life advice. Kyle, if people needed to understand <laughs> where to stay away from your versions of sound life advice and listen to the good holistic wellness the 10 stuff. The crack commandments. That we promote on the Hell Off the Strength podcast. <laughs> where would they need to touch down? Never sell no crack where you rest at. And where do they need to find us on the, on the good airwaves out here? You know, where we're trying to get these sponsors to come into, you know. Where, where are they going to find us? They're going to find you at a trainer called Tony. Yeah, and that's you can where they find, find me. me, the lively one, at KR Jones. Or you can find us together at Off the Strength underscore. All of this is on Instagram. If you're in the greatest city in the world, that is New York City. Sometimes you can mm -hmm. come on down to Rockefeller Center where you can see us record live and direct at Newsstand Studios on the block of the rock. If you can't make it to New York City, you can always visit Instagram at Rockefeller Center. 
or Twitter at Rock Center NYC. That's right. And of course, we are brought to you in part by the good brother Brian Perkins and I did that productions. Once again, it's been another fantastic episode of Off the Strength. I'm a trainer called Tony. KR Jones. Peace and much love to y'all out there. Until next time, we'll see you soon. Peace. What's good, everybody? I'm a trainer called Tony, and I am here from the infamous Off The Strength Podcast asking you today, listeners, viewers, wherever you may be, to please like, listen, and subscribe to our podcast. This is how we're going to continue to be able to deliver you the best goddamn wellness information out here. So if you want to keep hearing this and you want us to keep growing, you are a part of this show just as much as anything else. So please go to offthestrength.com. Make sure you check out our blogs. Make sure you check us out on IG. And if you're hearing this voice and you didn't hit that subscribe button, know that Kyle is going to come looking for you. You got that right.